Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and today I want to tell you about a way of viewing numbers where 1 divided by 7 gives you 43, which may seem absurd, but it's actually not only part of a mathematically consistent system called modular division in mod 60, but it's also something that applies to our real life because this fact holds true for minutes on a clock. Now, when I say to try and divide one by seven using the minutes on a clock, you might think that's an amount of seconds, one seventh of a minute. But what if we don't allow other units apart from the minute numbers, which can be zero, one, two, or any integer up through 59. 60 total possible numbers the minute could say. Since clocks move in a cyclical way, if I ever did something like move 61 minutes, I would end up on the same number as one of these smaller values, one minute in that case. And I could say that 61 is congruent to, sort of like the modular equal sign, one in this mod 60 where we were thinking about minutes on a clock. So how could we do operations like division using these? And how did one divided by seven supposedly give us 43? Well, we're gonna need to flash back to a type of numbers you're probably more familiar with, the non-negative integers, often called the whole numbers. Let's think about how this set of numbers acts under simple operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and which of these we can say that it's closed under. To be closed under a given operation, a set of numbers must have the property where applying that given operation to any members of this set will generate another member of the set. For example, if we apply an operation to any two non-negative integers, will we be guaranteed to get another number that's also a non-negative integer? Well, they are closed under addition because we can say that adding any two of these will be another one of these. And also under multiplication, multiplying any two of these will create another non-negative integer. But they're not closed under subtraction because I could do something like one minus three and get a result that's not a non-negative integer. I would have to extend this a bit, include the negative ones, and talk about all of the integers. When considering the set of all the integers, positive, negative, or zero, that set is closed under addition, multiplication, and subtraction, but not closed under division, because I could do something like one divided by seven, and my result isn't another integer. But if I brought out the rational numbers, all of the numbers that can be written as a fraction of two integers, which includes these and lots more, then I would be mostly closed under division. The rational numbers still can't divide by zero. I can divide any of them by another non-zero one and get another member of this set of rational numbers. So they're almost closed under division, but zero still doesn't work as a denominator. Now back to our clock minutes, where we're just talking about integers and we will reduce them to where they end up minute-wise on the clock. Which of these operations still have that property in this land where we could take two members of this set, apply one of the operations, and get another member of that set? Well, we can do that with addition. If I do something like, what is 30 minutes plus 40 minutes? Well, that moves 70 minutes, but that's equivalent to moving 10 minutes. 
because you cycle back around after the first 60. So we could say that that addition is congruent to 10 mod 60. And no matter what two integers I added together, I would end up congruent to one of these values. We can also do that with subtraction. If I add something like 10 minus 20 in this mod, which would be like going forward 10 minutes and then backwards 20 minutes. Well, that is congruent to negative 10 in this mod, but we can also reduce negative 10 to being congruent to 50, which is 10 before the mod number. So 10 minus 20, if we want to express it as one of the values in this set, we are able to. And same with any two integers that I applied subtraction to. Same with multiplication. If I do something like going forward 13 minutes 17 times, I'm going to end up on some minute number that's in this set. Doing that action isn't going to create a 61st minute per hour. But what about division? Now over here, let's note how if we normally did a division of something like A divided by B equals C, assuming that denominator B wasn't zero, this should be a valid expression in the more familiar rational numbers. And we should be able to write it either like a fraction to do that division, or we could say it's A times b to the negative first power equals c, or we could even multiply both sides of this by b to see that it's equivalent to the expression a equals b times c, and that this division is secretly a multiplication of sorts in disguise. Not all of these ways of writing this expression that worked in the rational numbers will translate to this modular realm. Like, I didn't write 1 divided by 7 as the fraction 1 seventh at the beginning. However, we can write it in this second form, where when I said 1 divided by 7, I can write 1 times 7 to the negative first power, which normally is called the multiplicative inverse of 7, and now is considered the modular multiplicative inverse of 7, which we'll have to unpack in a moment. And I didn't use the word equals. I said is because technically we're going to say it's congruent to 43 with that triple bar equals. If we ask for A divided by b in a modular way, we'll write that as a times the modular multiplicative inverse of b being congruent to some c. And this division is secretly a multiplication in disguise, just like it was for the rational numbers. Although we're not going to write this like a fraction looking a over b, we can apply this property where it's equivalent to a being congruent to b times c. So when we ask for 1 divided by 7 in a modular way, it's secretly like saying 1 is congruent to 7 times what? What is that C value? Which is like asking what number, if I spun forward 7 minutes, that number of times would be equivalent to spinning 1 minute. And it turns out that if I go 7 minutes 43 times, it will be congruent to 1 and end up landing me just 1 minute further than I started. However, if I tried to divide by 6 minutes of the clock, if I try to divide 1 by 6 in this mod 60 system, that would be written as 1 times the modular multiplicative inverse of 6 being congruent to some number we were calling C in mod 60. 
but that could be written as one being congruent to six times this C. That means that if I spin forward six minutes on a clock C amount of times, I'll end up having moved one minute total. And that's impossible. So this C can't exist, which we can describe as that six does not have a modular multiplicative inverse in mod 60. Since six doesn't have a modular multiplicative inverse in this mod, we're not gonna be able to divide anything by six here. In general, if I try and take A divided by B to get some C in some mod D, this will only be defined when this modular multiplicative inverse of B in the given mod exists. The times where this will have a solution are exactly the cases where this B number and this D number are co-prime or have no factors greater than one in common. And that's why I chose divided by seven as my main example, because two, three, four, five, and six have factors in common with 60, and I wouldn't have been able to take one divided by them. However, seven has no factors greater than one in common with 60. Seven and 60 are co-prime, sometimes also called relatively prime to each other. And that lets me divide anything by seven in this mod. Mod 60 here lets us see patterns that are like the minutes on a clock. And I could have also said seconds because seconds also move in a cycle of 60. But that's not the only time that our life has cycles. We could also look at something like mod 7, which weekdays move in. Each Monday is seven days after the last Monday. If I wanted to know what 1 divided by 2 was, what value is that congruent to in a mod 7 weekday-like cycle? That's like asking, which number C, if I multiply it by two in this mod seven, will be congruent to one, which is like asking, how many times do I have to go forward two days to be equivalent to having just gone forward one day total? And if I go forward two weekdays, four times, which is eight days, that is equivalent to just going forward one weekday from your start. So it turns out this answer of one divided by two in mod seven is four. Now, when we look at modular arithmetic, often it's most helpful to look at highly divisible mods, like mod 60. But in the case of modular division, the best are prime mods, like mod seven because all the numbers between one and one less than the mod number will be co-prime with that since it's a prime itself and thus we'll be able to divide by any of those. In a prime mod, we can divide by any number that's not congruent to zero. Whereas in a mod like mod 60, we can only divide when the numbers we're dividing by are co-prime to the mod number. So that explains why one, uh, why one divided by seven in this modular way had a solution in mod 60, but why was that solution 43? Well, there are a lot of cool patterns as to which numbers are the modular multiplicative inverse of another, and we'll send that number to one in a given mod. And we'll come back to those patterns in future episodes. But for now, my main goal was just to teach you folks about this strange other type of division. 
Although modular division breaks many of the rules that you're used to division following, if you play by its rules and only ever divide by something co-prime to the mod number, then it is a fully consistent system. And that's all for now. Thanks for joining me here today, and I'll see you next episode.